Mehran Kagani is a fabulous comedian. He's a, of Iranian descent. He's lived in London, and Turkey, and Boston, and all over the place. And, and here he is. Welcome. Am I Ma- saying hello? Yes, you are. Oh, Welcome, hi, Mehran. Good Welcome. morning. We're happy you're here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me, you beautiful people. Of course. You come in like a ball of energy. That It's the coffee. It is. And the, and the meth. <laughs> okay. enough, We've enough. never interacted before other than at the cellar we bump into each other and we did that that kind of sit around documentary with uh, with fucking uh, with Christina. We did with Christina Hutchinson. Yeah, it was, was it a documentary it was a on good slut? What? Yeah, what is that about? <laughs> uh, I believe it's about a prostitute woman who is also a comedian who goes by the name of Wendy Starling. Oh, yeah, we have Wendy, a very yeah, yeah very. Oh, it's her documentary. Comedian. Yeah. Oh. oh, I thought it was Christina's. No. Oh, that's right. It's, but it's about it's Wendy. Yes, it's going to Wendy's documentary. Yeah. So Wendy, I think, uh, at some point uh, came across some kind of billionaire because she keeps, I swear I'm not on coke. I swear to God I'm not on coke. It's okay if you are. No, I would tell you if I were on coke. I'd share if I were on coke. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And uh, someone took some kind of interest in her. This was like three years ago when I met her and she was on a bunch of coke. I see. uh, And then she mentioned that someone was making a documentary about her and here we are three years later. I yeah, was she, was, she was in last. Was, in, was she in uh, last Monday or last yeah, week? Yeah, last she came week in. sometime. She's a fun girl. Yeah, she is. I was hoping we were finally going to get a documentary where it uncovers the fact that a lot of comedians, while they're funny on stage, are mm. sad in real life. <laughs> mm, we did kind of end up getting <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah, we talked about like watching people burned alive and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, we talked. He's, he's a beheading video fan. <laughs> you are a beheading video fan. I have to see everything because I'm from Iran. I lived in Iran near the I height see. of the Iran Iraq War, so I saw my first limb at nine. What'd wow. you say? Yes, it was, was like a, it was a leftover limb. It was a limb of a. But of do a we person. know what limb it was? Leg no, and arm? We don't know. It was, no, it was an arm. Okay. And uh, so ever since then, I have to see like the most gruesome thing. Like if I hear there's a car accident, I have to see the pieces. It's who I am. It does jade you though. It makes you weirdly like dis. It makes you like desensitized to it. Yeah. And then you'll see one that resets it. Like one will be so bad, you're like, oh my god, I can't go down this road. That actually just happened to me. That's uh, when. That's th- when you have to get out and say no more. This most recent uh, season of Narcos, mm-hmm. I was just watching it with the FBI agent what Camarena. Yes, Kiki sure. Camarena. Sure. And they tortured him for like thirty hours. Yeah. And so. This is the sick part, is that if I'm watching it on, on the screen and I know it's supposed to go down a certain way, I'll be like, eh, it didn't happen like that. Or it would be it would be more gruesome than that. People pop like grapes. So uh, I had to look up and actually read what happened to him, and that went too far. When I re- Just when I reading read, it. Just reading the real what story. they story. Yes. What did they do to him that was, so, that was so bad? The worst part, which I had never heard before, is that they kept him awake on meth. So where normally people would pass out yeah. from the intensity Intensity of the torture, they kept him alive on meth so that he was up for 30 hours getting tortured. Oh my God. It, it fucked they were me using up. Meth. It completely fucked That's me up. That's what got you. That, yes! The meth, because I've done, I, w- when I was younger, much, much uh-huh. younger and thinner, I, uh, I did a bunch of, I used to do a bunch of meth. And uh, I believe, I know that you would stay awake through torture. It's a mess. That's a mess. Oh, what were they wow. torturing him with? Uh, drills. And <laughs> oh, did they drill through his hand or something? They drill through his hand and head. Uh, so you're he like was crushed. So you're like, I've been on meth before. I know that on meth, the last thing I'd want to do is have drills put into my body. Or maybe the first, but then not thirty <laughs> hours. Right. Thirty hours is bananas and Mexicans. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's a good point. It's a good yeah. point. So is that how you desensitize yourself when you're a kid and you're kind of like, this is the reality that I live in. You just have to disconnect from it and just well, no, take it all in, so just, you're not. That is reality. Right. That's reality. Like other shit. You know, like a Nick Cage movie, you know what I mean? Like not reality, limb reality. Right. You know, car accident reality, motorcycle accident reality. Those are the best videos, by the way. Motorcycle. Ooh. You like those? I, yes. I, don't, I don't like them, but I watch them because those are ones that could happen. Like I won't watch the beheadings anymore or the, or the murders, but in a car accident is a feasible way to die. And like I could see that happening. Yeah. So that just reminds me to be traffic smart. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. This like it reaffirms one's fear of heights. What happens yeah. when people fall from heights? Jesus. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. That. When you see somebody that's like hanging on and you're like in that moment, he thought he might pull himself back up, mm. and then the hands just slip. Yep. Like, he really thought Butter he was going to get back up. <laughs> Whoopsie! <laughs> I do I do pull-ups in the gym, and I always thought, I've Good seen footage of, of guys, like, <laughs> gripping something and falling. But I'll do pull-ups, and I'll think of that, and getting yourself in a pull-up 
all over is is it, it, I couldn't do it. It's really yeah. tough. I couldn't get on, even though I can do a pull up. I, it doesn't matter. I could not hoist my body weight up onto a thing if I, I was dangling I, I by my hands. I rehearse falling. I rehearse let losing my grip, and then, ah, it's a drama. It's I'm, I'm mostly at the gym for drama. I see. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> So, I mean, your parents had to be very proud. You know, you you come out as a as a gay man. This you start hysterical. doing meth. You, you do <laughs> you do all this stuff. Your conservative Iranian parents must have been like, "Oh, we were hoping we would have a gay son that did meth." Yeah, I lost. I did. I I, I lost my parents. Unfortunately, not in a fire. Uh, that's an <laughs> awful thing to say. Uh, no, but they 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 lost. They they stopped tracking uh, me somewhere around fifteen. So you do not have a relationship with them at all. I, I to do this now. Day? Now I do, but it's almost like you know, it's we kind of haunt each other. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like two ghosts passing in the night. Right. It's not a. It's not like a good flesh and blood relationship. You know, it's it's bizarre. People have you. You kind of only get one chance to like to really fail your your kids or your parents. You really only get one chance, and then after that, it's sort of. Do they live there or no? Here, no, they're here. Well, dad's dead. Thank God. <laughs> I swear to God, there was no better feeling than when my dad died. Did, I don't know if that? people have this feeling, and I know a lot of people love their parents, but uh, I, the, my father, there was like this oppressive. So long as he he walked this earth, I felt like he was he had some kind of influence on my life. And when he died, I was like, oh, I like I. It felt like a literal weight was lifted off my shoulders. Well, I was reading about your story about when you came out to him. Oh, wow! And and the advice that he gave you was. Yeah. Suicide, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he told me to kill myself at fifteen. He uh, how did, did you come out to him? Uh, I to I just told him I was like, Dad, I think I'm bisexual. Which I like. I lied to everyone about the bisexual thing. It was never going to happen. It was just a. It's been a motorway to like a landing strip of dicks. For <laughs> I don't know, like twenty five, twenty six years. I've just, dicks and dicks and dicks. Have you but, ever fucked uh, a girl? Uh, I ate a girl's pussy out because she bought me Stoli Orange. It was like a long. I was uh, <laughs> it, the Coke Mount Miami. Uh, so, did you but you wanted. It? You I, had to, I pretended it was an asshole. I really did. I to, <laughs> in order to deep dive on her vagina, I was just, it's just a rectum with lips. But you and wanted people those. to believe like, oh, no, I might like girls a little bit. No, <laughs> well, no, but no. It, it definitely increases your street cred. Like if you can go to the walk the mean streets of Chinatown, mm -hmm. now gays are more interested in you. Oh. Yeah, they know that you might not stick around. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. It's like, oh, he can do that. It's almost like a uh, Kianes Mas Macho. It's like when uh, people eat cockroaches for Rogan. Do you know what I mean? They're yes, just trying to get in his factor. pants. Yeah, yeah, you know? that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> so, but you figure if you tell your dad you're bisexual, at least he might think he might not be as disappointed. He won't completely withdraw. You know what I mean? Like, which you were incorrect he'll come about. Come on I my guess. back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was completely wrong. And then, so my father was a neuropsychiatrist. His clinic was the bottom floor of our house growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to, because my dad grew up hyper poor, he did a lot of, uh, of pro bono work. So he had villagers, illiterate villagers from all around Iran who would bring their, their kids and themselves into his office. He had one villager family who uh, they brought their son. They were like, he's gay. My dad's like, I don't have a therapy for this. There's no drug for this. He just has to abstain. They came back two months later. They were like, he killed himself. So there was no thought in your dad's mind of he could just live it's okay. as a gay oh, no, 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 no. And, and, like, and also, that's not true culturally. Like, if three men of repute uh, accuse you of homosexuality, you now stand on trial for homosexuality. And the outcomes are death, mm -hmm. uh, repentance in prison, or uh, forced mandatory sex change. Uh, wow! Yeah. Oh, trans people over there. Are, if you if you get a sex change and you're trans, they they, they you're okay. You are now a heterosexual female. You're not a homosexual male. So they don't. But they they're don't, not even trans though. They're not. And right. They're, they're forced. And there's like uh, there are stories and stories and stories of people who wish that they didn't have their dicks chopped off. Surprise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that being high on the wish list. Yeah. By so, the way, that would explain why some of the other limbs that you saw just out sure. and about on the street later in life. It's cash. just dicks everywhere. <laughs> oh my god, that's uh, you have no idea how hot I just got. But, uh, so, <laughs> so the kid killed himself. So the kid killed himself, and then my dad said, Well, it was for the best. He did. And that was the story my father told me instantly. Like I was like, Dad, I think I'm I like dudes. And he was like, Let me tell you something. It's for the best. <laughs> yeah. He wanted you to kill yourself. Suicide is for the best. Yeah, and he's like a master manipulator. I mean, he's a super psychiatrist. He's trained so many people all around the world. So did he believe that? That he he actually believed that himself though? I think yeah, I think he would have liked but then here's the thing is that after he died, I found all these pictures of him in like on the beach in like the south of France, and it's like just him and muscular dudes, not a woman to be found, and it's all pictures of just the dudes wow like not one picture of like 
you know, a sweet French. So you think he might have had an inclination, or I, I, I mean, the, most guys end up experimenting. Not Sam? to be, not to be gross. <laughs> Sam, have come on, Sam. I haven't experimented myself. Uh, it's okay. Yet. Yeah, no, the Yet. night, the day is young, That's Sam. That's right. <laughs> it's I just mean, the morning. I have been under more fucking <laughs> rando stri- than futon mattress. It's <laughs> unbelievable I, how many times I've been the experimentee. Right, you oh, don't right. mind that. I loved it. It uh-huh. used to be my favorite thing was being with straight dudes. That's scary to be in Iran doing that though when they fucking when they'll kill you for it. But I that's the thing is I I when I was really at the height of it, I was the scarier party. What do you Can, mean? Like uh, no I I would specifically go out and look for someone who scared me and invariably scare them. I How? was a I was a super drinker. Like I was a I Were was, you a fighter? Were you aggressive? I I could be aggressive. Uh-huh. I could fight, but I didn't like I, that was last resort. So you lived in Iran f- for how long? What ages were you? Zero in? to three, nine to eleven. Okay, so you kind of you don't come out in Iran, but at eleven, do you kind of get that like the stuff that at three everyone you knew. knew I was a fag. Okay. But my brother said to my dad, and I found this out recently that like that he said that yeah, I would have sold my ass for candy, and I would have. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. I loved candy, and I had very little regard for my ass. <laughs> so. so- So are you terrified then when you're 11 and you're in Iran and you're kind of putting the pieces together and you see that this is how just the reality is people treat uh, gay people this way. Are you going like, holy shit, what am I going to do with this? Well, at the time, like it wasn't it wasn't even a gay question. It was more that like, you know, I was kind I I was kind of more of a sissy. Like I was just kind of girlier. We call them theatrical. Right. right. Effervescent. Yeah. Um, and there was this kid who was really like clearly trans. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, if whether or not you believe in it at all, when you see someone who is just so the other gender, as kids, you're kind of like, well, I guess like sometimes it might happen. And uh, that she was, I have to call her a she. It was a boy, but like. He was so delicate and he used to carry pictures of like the Shah's wife and be like, isn't she beautiful? Look at the tiara. (laughs) Like this kid was sissy and they beat the shit out of this kid. Like Mm -hmm. they beat him rotten, you know? So yeah, that was the scary part was like, if I, if like, you know, but for one more, you know, walk in my mom's high heels, there go I, you know what I mean? Right. Right, so, so not, let me not be the sissy. I can't be that sissy. I can't right. ever, if I cross that line, if where I'm that kind of rooty tooty, fresh and fruity, I'm out. They're you don't want to be that shy. obvious. I, you can't. Lucky for you, that young gentleman has set the bar so far into <laughs> sissydom yeah. that you can get away with a lot. And that man is now our vice president. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to him? Uh, I'm telling you, he he ran with Trump, and uh, he <laughs> calls his wife mother. <laughs> he has come here. Um, <laughs> No, I did, honestly, I, I have no idea. Oh. I, I had to get out of there. The Iran-Iraq War, that was when my parents decided to go back, was the height of the Iran-Iraq War. That was, it was the stupidest imaginable time to go back. And so we were there. Saddam Hussein took over our radio. He pirated our radio. Said that he was going to bomb schools and hospitals every morning at six in the morning. And he held true to that. He did. Yeah. It, there was literally, my elementary school was, what it was, it abutted. Is that the word? Uh, a hospital, so he hit both with one bomb. Did, now, is is there still ill feelings towards Saddam in Iran? When he was going down, I was just like, who do you think hates this guy more, me or any Bush lover? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, who do you think? Like, I hate this guy with my whole soul, and I have reason to. It's not like propagandist, like fake oil reasons. It's like this guy took over our radio and bombed my school when I was nine. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I legit hate this guy. Whereas the rest of us were just like, yeah, 9-11. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, Desert Storm. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? And then, like, oh, they, they hit the towers. They didn't hit the towers. Right, right, yeah. right. So w- you did you come back to the States after when you were 11? Yeah, and then 11, I had to, I had to go to Turkey, do my own, like, my own immigration work, and then come back to the States. So and how old were you when you came out? Fifteen. Oh, fifteen. Okay. Fifteen was when I came out, but like you know, and then I didn't even act on it till I was eighteen. No, seventeen. Seventeen, I made out with that kid Josh, who later became like a Jewish pop star. Did Is he? that right? Mm-hmm. Oh Where'd my. you make out with him? In a hotel toilet. <laughs> it was so. What's better than hotel toilets? I, I've been blown in a hotel bathroom yes. before. Have you? Yeah, by the girl. She was. Uh, she was. It was. It was. She was going to get married. And Rich Voss went in with her first. <laughs> oh I, no! And I made out with her, and, and this is true. And then he, and then he's like, "You made out with her?" And he goes, "She ate my ass. She <laughs> ate Rich's ass before." Uh, yes. Uh. <laughs> and then I made out with her after I, because the one that I was out in the other room with wanted nothing to do with me. So we both went with this one bridesmaid or bride, or whatever she was. 
was. She went ass to mouth, <laughs> except with Voss's ass in your mouth. Yes, and, and, and yeah, and then she sucked my dick. She was sitting in the toilet, and I made out with her. She was cute. Was she getting? She you don't remember if she was getting married? I think she might have been. The Bachelorette. I don't remember exactly. It's been just you know, 15, It'd 20 like years ago. Television's Bachelorette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I remember, I've never forget Voss saying that to me. You didn't kiss her. I'm like, yeah, he, she ate my ass. I'm just so happy. He didn't tell you in advance. No, he did not. <laughs> no, he, no, he just sent me in there. <laughs> Fucking Mr. Love Struck and Lonely. Do you know how, how is, I don't know too many women who like go straight for ass eating. A lot of them do. You'd be surprised. Like in a toilet with Rich Voss? Yeah, I mean, I guess it was more pleasant to look at than his face. <laughs> <laughs> So then, do you stop? Do you does your relationship with your parents become strained at fifteen, or was it I mean, later? I mean, it, it, it had already been strained. Right, I see. It had already been strained, and I then see. that was just sort of like, and then, uh, the, and, but that's what I mean. Is like, there's no, there's so when no your dad, coming back from that. When your dad is like, you should maybe kill yourself. You're going like, yeah, I kind of figured you'd do something shitty like that. No, I was devastated. Oh, like okay. I'm not even going to paint like you know. Oh, I was over it. I wasn't an over it kid. I'm I'm probably still not an over it adult. I mean, like it fucking hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was crawling out of that room with razor blades mm -hmm. in my pockets like I was a mess <laughs> right uh but yeah and then he died and then I felt better I, and that <laughs> did you ever speak to him again yeah I tried I tried having a relationship with him until the bitter end like this is just like a sad story that gets sadder and sadder and sadder well until he's gonna dies he's gonna he be bummed better. out because clearly every time you talk to him he finds out that you don't listen to him well and then I'm gonna rat on him on a national scale I will like for the rest of my life I'm right. gonna tarnish his name it's bizarre <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't you wish he could see it mm. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure he could predict it. Do you talk to your mom? Do you ever say sure, like sure, sure. Do you ever go like mom, you know this is what dad said to me. Sure, Isn't... sure. Oh no, she was the 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 whole family was in cahoots. Right. So she's actually thing. she was like, Yeah, he was right. Yeah. Like <laughs> it was just like we you know, we told him to say something. <laughs> like he had to do something. You were going to sell your ass for candy. Right. Like that was the general belief. And it's true. And I did sell my ass for candy. Like they weren't you should see what I'm wearing. Like uh I, I ended up being a raver, taking that. Like, I was like a future problem child. For you were sure. everything they were worried about. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, there's no resisting it. Do you know what I mean? You just mm -hmm. want to give it a safe place to land. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That right. makes sense. <laughs> You're how, not going to change how it. How did you, was the guy, you know, is the guy gay who you wound up kissing or no? Uh, no, no. The next day he ended up like, uh, we were at a choral retreat. And then the next day he uh, fell for a girl. And left me like I thought like we were gonna get married. I was like, oh, I just like made out with my husband in a hotel toilet. Right. And then uh, and then the next day he was with a girl. Wow. Broke my heart broke my heart. Yeah, and that's a big. That's the first dude you're making out with. That's a big step. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. And like my parents had made me swear I wouldn't do anything until I was 18. I fucking I was just under 18. And, but you uh, were so like, this is it. He's and it was the one. So, and it felt so right. I'm in this hotel so toilet. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, every girl I had ever made out with, it was, like, a bit of a chore. It was a bit of, like, you know, sure. a floor routine. It was very gymnastic. Uh, but he, this was the most natural, right thing in the entire world. And then, boo. And then the next day he fell for He's a, a pop star? Kind of. Oh, yeah, he I want to know. Don't yeah, you want to know? I know. <laughs> I, I want to. I mean, like, there's a part of me that wants to burn him, but like, you I know, mean, he was only 15. Yeah, I mean, would it be a big? No, 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 no. We were 17, but yeah, 17. Would it be a big deal? I mean, you don't know. You don't. I wanna... imagine because he he kind of, he does the religious circuit. Oh boy. Mm. Oh mm. boy, it probably boy, would be a big yeah. deal. Mm. I don't know what this man is talking about. It never happened. I know. I don't even use the bathroom in hotels. <laughs> I, I never know. have. Do you I still know. talk to him? No, 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 no. <laughs> he like he wouldn't take my calls after. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it he's was probably just, ashamed of Well, no, of and also, I went yeah. full psycho. You did? The next day that he went with this girl, I was like, my minions. Like, I've sicked the world on the two of them. <laughs> Wait, you told people about it? Oh, yeah. I was like, I was a woman scorned. Like, that's the great thing about being out is that now you can, like, you know, it's not, you're, you're not playing with secrets. You're playing <clears throat> right. with actual life. Right. And, uh, right. Right. Yes. And so, yeah, I sicked the world on them. I was like, look at what these fuckers did to my feelings. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, That's there's great. like, you know, 200 coral kids who are just like, you fuckers. <laughs> did he deny it? Uh, I, I don't even know that. I mean, he didn't have to. He was with a girl. I don't know. There, It never, there it was, never became a question of denying it. <laughs> there was no denial because it was just people shouting at him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was no conversation. Right. And now I he see. lives in Israel, and I'm sure he's. it's the same. Okay. Oh, he's there? <laughs> no, I don't oh. think he's there. I think he's probably in like Pennsylvania. But you decided not to keep it a secret. What? Not here. 
<laughs> but I mean, in school, you, you wanted people to know back then too. For sure. Yeah. I was so hurt. <laughs> right. Well, well and also right it let me play out my hurt narrative, which like at the time they used to call me scarf boy because I wore many, many scarves. And so, so you it, gave like, up on that whole not being the sissy thing once you got to the I States. did. It's yeah. gone. Yeah. It's gone. I didn't, scarf wear, boy. I didn't wear a fake fur coat here today. <laughs> I, I'm not wearing pointy witch shoes. I'm not. I am. <laughs> I'm not a fag anymore, dad. I'm not a fag anymore. That is, that is uh, a very, uh, a very, it's a black and white and gray a, a very uh is it real fur or is it faux it's definitely fake fur faux fur yeah yeah yeah, yeah. faux fur yeah because i'm green just kidding <laughs> i would i would eat the animal that looked this pretty are you kidding me i would eat it and then wear its raw hide on my back um no it's so, fake fur because you it, animals don't happen like this so then you move on and you uh become a a, a drug user rave kid yeah which saved me saved my life how so sure. I don't know. I think psychotropics are going are like the right way to reset a totally broken soul. Like I think the I right see. wing could would do well with like a good acid or ayahuasca retreat. Did you you know the ayahuasca? I can't do it, but I mean, some fighter was talking Why about can't it. Why can't you? Nah, I don't do. I've been in recovery. I just can't. I, I don't trust myself. If It'd you be a think problem. of it as plant medicine, and really you don't, it's not the kind of thing where you do it and you're like, I want to do blow. It's not. No, I know, but I'm. But I you just, might. I, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you. I'm a problem. Yeah, I'm a I fucking compulsive that. little douche. We should. We should do a would gym you like on ayahuasca. See, would you like show? to see me on uh, ayahuasca? Yeah, I think we should do it. We're going on a retreat. I'll go with you. It is plant based. Ayahuasca yeah, retreats? in March. Really nice. It is plant based medication. After oh, all. okay. Troy, you know what? Let's go to the voice of reason. Troy, do you think it's a good idea or a bad idea? I think it's a great idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, think, I think we'll get to the bottom of a lot of shit. I'm oh, I know. Yeah. You open a lot of boxes. You do. I mean, that's like literally the sky unzipped and like a like a mother insect came out who was made out of like a million digital tiles yeah uh, yeah it was like when i when i like a, a female spirit phalanx of of chips does that... surgery on you you take it seriously <laughs> do you think that do you think that that's one of the reasons why you uh you own your lifestyle the way you do you kind of announce it to the world is because whatever the first 18 years of your life it's your parents kind of and everything around you when you're living in Iran and everything, letting you know this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. The minute you get away from that, you're like, this is right. I, I, I really respect what you're saying. But I think w in my case, it was that like I was only like a quarter note away from being that like dainty girl mm -hmm. boy mm -hmm. in Iran. Like because I'm... Because you didn't and, want to get your ass kicked. Like, well, it's it's just that I've always been this this fruity, and I've always been this outgoing, and I've always dressed like when I was a little kid, I would only wear sherbet colors. Like, it's really, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, that's like a and like refuse to leave the house if I couldn't. You know is what it, I like? <laughs> is there a big market for sherbet colored boys' clothing in Iran? <laughs> I mean, like, which is why I get to shop off the sale rack. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just no one's buying this shit. Um, but that's wasn't it? It was just this is just you. It's I've, always been I you. I swear to God, I, I never had. You. There was never like a, a another option. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, totally. I, when I was like a super alcoholic, like when I drank like to scare people, mm -hmm. I went through like almost like a militaristic butch phase. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as that left my system, I was like back to like tiptoeing through the tulips. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I was, yeah. <laughs> but that's it. So I had a brief butch phase. You did? Yeah, that was alcohol fueled. Purely did you have alcohol. a lot of aggressive interactions in bars? Yeah, I was a bartender. I was like a featured bartender. I was me and this Australian prostitute uh, <laughs> who taught me how to drink. We were uh, in the paper in Miami and we would out drink our bar four nights a week. What is a featured bartender? So uh, we it, come drink with Miron and, and I won't say her because she didn't sure. sign up for this, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll come and pee. And, uh, and we would go there and we and anyone who would come to our bar, if they had a shot, we had a shot. I see. And that's for the whole bar. Oh so my god. They had a mind eraser, we had a mind eraser. And we would drink that much four nights a week. And then in the wow. morning we would go to another bar and drink until noon. After we closed our bar. Wow. Yeah. I mean it was it was like marathon athletic drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot of vomiting? No one. Dr mm, I w what I became amazing at was riding my bike and just puking while I was <laughs> riding my bike. I became amazing at that, like do 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 do, and like not miss a pedal. So you get the angle right, so that when the wind hits it, it's not hitting you on the side. I was a professional. I'm sure. <laughs> just hang <laughs> over, let, let go I'm with sure. one hand, vomit. Yeah. Yeah, and keep going. That's Hit incredible. Hit by a car, get up, puke, get back on the car, keep going. <laughs> like all of those things happen. No problem. But you'd yeah. probably drink past any hangover too. Uh, well, I mean, like, I remember that, like, one day a week, I would order two pizzas and sit at my computer and shake. Sure. And listen to one album over and over again and just eat. 
Right. That was the way my body was able to survive that. It's probably healthy. What album that would you listen so to? Good. Realistically, Stevie Nicks, Trouble in Shangri-La. <laughs> like, if course. I'm telling you the truth, that's the record, uh, which was about, like, a breakup because I had been with this guy who had a dick like a big, like, it was like a teenager's arm. Do you know what I mean? Like, wow. it was ridiculous. It was uh, why I moved to Miami. Your, your preference did is- Did that make it hard? Sorry, Sam. Did that make it hard to replace him? Yeah, I mean, still, <laughs> even even in my mind, you know what I mean? It was just this crackling mammoth, this And it's wind probably song. only grown in your mind. No, no, no. It you, was it, You the... can't exaggerate this thing. Wow. It was, it was the one. You prefer a bigger penis on a man. You know, uh, at the tender age of 42, I'll tell you, and it's like the, the asshole isn't what it used to be, kids. Like, uh, <laughs> in my 20s, it was elastic, pretty, you know what I mean? Yeah, pretty, like I a do. Korean girl's skin, beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, and now it's just mangled. It looks like right. the underside of an elementary school desk. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a bit terrible. It's, it's a lot of mileage. Initials. Yeah, it's been vandalized. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and, ver and it's just not as permeable as it used to be. Right. It used to, you know? Right. It used to just be ah, <laughs> like a Pokemon. Like there are some, uh, you know, animated monsters that can take huge amounts of food. What happened to the guy? Uh, he, the worst person in the entire world. Oh, I, moved, well, I moved for the worst person in the entire world. I when you've got a dick that. like that, you tend to be the worst person I in the world. I imagine having a giant why, dick makes yeah. you a shitty person. Because yeah. why you would, would you, have to be. Why would you work on being a good person if you're like, but my dick though? This is the truth. Right? We're getting there. We're get, we, we are so close to telling America the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you, like giant you, dicks are giant dicks. If you've got a dick that's big enough that Mehran is coming in here, yeah. what is it, 15, 20 years later? Yeah, shocked. Still shocked going, at what I saw. This is the dick of a lifetime mm -hmm. why would you ever learn to treat people well i don't know that it's the dick of a lifetime really yeah that being said even though it's the like the most impressive member i've seen yes. you know what i mean rasputin uh, <laughs> like even though i don't know that it's it's for a lifetime you know what i, I mean? see some some giant dicks are for a season in fact i would say most giant dicks are how for long a did you date for uh on and off year and a half oh, okay on yeah. and off year and a half, yeah. They say dicks in your life are seasons, I think. The, I think that's and, the old expression. And you season yeah. those dicks. Right, right. With your love. But Is it now, hard to walk away? Uh, physically, I mean. Yeah, physically. <laughs> <laughs> like a rodeo cowboy. <laughs> Wide gate, just sort of teetering from one heel to the other. Yeah, that's how I, that's how I left him. Uh, yeah, no, it, was, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't. He was a garbage human being. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really, like an actual terrible person. Terrible person. Yeah. So at what point do you get into comedy? Uh, so then I'm working at Harvard for some year. I like leave bartending because I'm like, this is unsustainable. I will drink myself to death. Yes. Uh, so then I started working at Harvard as a temp. Doing what? Uh, licking envelopes, literally licking freshman year grades wow. to be sent out to the parents. But it sounds very impressive to that, be like, that, I work at Harvard. Yeah, sure. Well, you I mean, it was, a, it was a temp job. Harvard? I grew up mostly in the Boston oh, okay. area. So I was back there. My brother started having babies all over the place. I had to go back to Boston to I be see. like, to have some semblance of like an uncle role. And in my head, I was like, that's like my connection to my family is this next generation. They'll realize how fucked up they were and like... I'll have these nieces and nephews who get it. Right. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Republicans, like tiny Republicans. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> you don't have that much in common with your nieces and nephews? Like, not really. I see. And, um, I see. So, Still the black sheep. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. like, they've had this narrative about like their crazy druggy uncle who ruined this family. <laughs> you see. know what I mean? I Is see. it the gayness or the or the uh, or the drugs that freaks them out? Uh, well, it started with the gay. You know, it it ha it's in general. It's like you know, he just won't do as he's told. Uh. He could have settled down and been a lawyer and married a pretty Snow White looking girl. And instead, here he is, like, sucking dicks and doing lines. God right. damn it. Are you still a recreational drug user? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But recreational. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. it doesn't enter the dark zone. If I it's, see. When it stops being fun, we stop yeah. doing drugs. Right. Right, kids? <laughs> uh, so that... that was a Nancy Reagan quote. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. so. It is. Yeah. Uh, so then... Um, so you get into comedy. I get into comedy because I, so I started working at Harvard and then this one manager was like, what do you think about the people who work here? I told her exactly what I thought. He thought, she thought that, uh, that I had good insights mm -hmm. and took me all the way to the top. And the next thing I know, I was the project manager for the office of the president under Larry Summers, the former secretary of the treasury under Clinton. So I was writing. Did you for... go to college? No. Okay. That was... <laughs> uh, yeah. Dropout. I'm a college dropout. I see. Did they? Did the people at Harvard, like when you get to that level, did they realize that the only reason you were there is because you were chased out of Miami by a giant penis? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a badge of honor! I never, I never came to that, but that's the truth. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, and then he uh, got fired. He got chased out of Harvard, uh, so he resigned. Uh, I'm in Newsweek. I'm one of four people who walked about when he resigned. This is a college dropout who's doing all this. And mm. then uh, I went to the Harvard School of Public Health uh, after because my boss went back there. And um, w- within one year, George W. Bush cut public health funding. So my department saw huge cuts. There was no reason to keep paying for me to be there. It was such a made up job. And uh, I was unemployed. And when I was looking at more jobs, I was like, I would sooner kill myself than go back to higher education administration. And then your dad would have been proud. My yeah. dad, my family loved me for like th- like a year and a half. Like two I mean, if you killed in yourself there. because if of I the killed jobs, myself, yeah, he would have been like, I, I did it. <laughs> yeah. I did it. Yeah. Um, no, but they liked me when I worked at Harvard. I'm and sure. Then, <laughs> um, I'm sure. And then I I just couldn't possibly go back to comedy, so I became a comedian. You couldn't go back to Harvard. I became, couldn't go yeah, back yeah. to Harvard, so I became a comedian. Wow. Yeah. So that's later in life, though, that you became a comedian. Yeah. You gotta, that's, yeah. Well, uh... no. I mean, it's still 12 years ago, 11 oh, years okay. ago. Isn't it great to be in a job where, like, you know none of the comics, like, no one cares, like, in a, in a good way. Like, yeah. Yeah. You, what whatever. do you mean? About lifestyles? Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it's like, eh, fine, whatever. Good. Right. Can you make it funny? Yeah. All right. We're good. The most important thing that, I mean, like, you know, I raving was like, it was a huge <laughs> deal for me because I found a group of people that of, like, sort of like mind, like, a bunch of broken children who were taking drugs and partying together to kind of... Like what kind of pants did you wear when you were raving? Stovepipe, like you know, I mean, UFOs? Huh? Oh, uh, Jenko, Jenkos, Jenkos, and UFOs. Jenkos. Oh, you're the man. <laughs> um, Jenkos and UFOs, and like you know, eventually I was friends with like fashion designers and kids who knew how to sew, so they were making me my my your own custom giant pants. Jenkos yeah. and UFOs, I, which I still have a few pairs. That's like, so dope. Do they have uh, do they have giant bottom like the bell bottom? Yeah, type? absolutely. Yeah. Except like, except it's not just the bell bottom; it's the whole leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I'd wear them with like six inch stacks and like party and like t- when I would take my shoes off, I would be I would of dance for like three days on meth. Jim, so, have you seen UFO cargo pants? I have not seen the UFOs. Oh, Jankos I'm familiar with. You know Jankos. Yes, I do. Yeah. UFOs. UFOs. You sure. know what? Honestly, Chip should consider investing in a pair of yeah, UFOs yeah. for the next. Let me see what UFOs they are the like. fucking uh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like uh, nylon oh, cargo yeah, yeah. pants. Mm-hmm. Except there's like straps that hang down off of them and the bright colors. Go down the to the pink. The black ones were the ones I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah like them. that's, those are UFOs. <laughs> Would you wear those? Uh, probably not the pink. I mean, I cared about being hot. I did care about being hot because I was like, I I needed to make up for lost time. I mean, like 90% of why I read was like, I lost a bunch of weight. I was, you know, I was looking good. I was dancing. I'm around all these sort of like cute straight boys who were on ecstasy. So it's like their night off, you know? Right. So for me, it was about looking cute and kind of selling straight a little bit. Did you, now, did you ever meet, <laughs> did you ever meet a guy who might not be gay? He might've been straight and then just take him somewhere and suck his penis? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> like almost exclusively, but if, if I can say it, like it wasn't, it wasn't that me tooy. Like you know what I mean? No, like it seems, would, it was consensual. Yeah, I would, of course. I would at least make out with them on the dance floor before. Right. That's not, if he's, the guy's getting blown, that's not me too. If the guy's getting blown, it's, he's just letting you blow him. That's all. You could stop I, somebody from blowing you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I, in, like what other people think about in terms of like their gender and their sexual orientation is never my problem. Right. right. You're just it's like, not, hey, that's their, that's their narrative. You're How giving them agency. My, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Run with your truth, baby. Run right into my mouth. So, <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I just want to hear the sound of nylon UFOs <laughs> swishing <laughs> on the floor because he's kneeling down. I'm blowing a guy who's just there with his girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> some, some guy in his fucking football jersey, his yeah. football sweater. She's having a bad trip because she can't find him. Yeah. I know, I know. Well, what are you going to do? I know. What Listen, it do? was like two hours tops. <laughs> would, would they ever be with their girlfriends? What do you mean? Like At the dance? Yeah, at they the were dance. at the dance. <laughs> the dance. Do you want to go to the? D- I've heard at about the, this dance. Yeah, at the sock ca- hop at the cotillion. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were. <laughs> they were often there with their girlfriends. Yeah, but sometimes you would perform oral sex on them. Well, I, or or we would just get naked and be disgusting because nobody could get a boner on all the drugs we were on. I right? see. So yeah. you'd just be rubbing flaccid penises yeah. or whatever. Oh, and his fraudage. girlfriend was just right outside the bathroom. Yeah, or whatever. still smoking, being <laughs> I like, see. "I love you guys." <laughs> I, I engaged in frottage when I was in high school, but in the hallway, I would like bump girls' asses with the back of my hand like sure, just sure. the girl i didn't know there was a term for it called frottage is that yes. what that is it yes. is yeah it's when you we call i called it grazing and my buddy would always ask me did you do any grazing today i'd be like yeah and i would tell her what girls i got 
But the feel of a double cheeker, getting the cheek crack in the cheek was like, when I was 14, that was fucking everything. But yeah. that's called frottage? Yeah, it's a fetish. But I, I just see. go home and jerk off remembering it. You would? Yeah, there was, no, uh, I, there was no internet porn. No, no. So you had to perform a little bit of frottage. You just had to remember the girl's hiney you bumped into. <laughs> yeah, in the locker room for that. I mean, like, I would just sit there like, you know, when other people are like tying their shoelaces, I would be like, uh, like staring. To, I would sit on the bench and then just be in dick world. You so know you what would, I mean? Like you, if it were a Mario level, it would be Dick World. Right. You'd just be sitting there being like, this is great. I'll go into the locker room, change for a gym, but really I get to look at all these dicks for a while. Yes. You love that. Yes. That's did, awesome. Did you ever get caught staring at a penis and scolded? No. <laughs> <laughs> because they weren't, I mean, like, I'm sure they were nervous about it or they just took it for granted that I was doing it. Right. You know what I mean? Because I, again, I like you could see me from space in terms of. How how gay it was. Your sexuality wasn't a secret. It could it never had the luxury of being a secret. It never had the luxury. I see. I see. You didn't ever. Did you ever date a girl that was like, oh, I thought Kinda. we were met, Kinda. meant to be ish? Because you you will find women, especially when oh, yeah. like young, mm. Mm. that like they want to believe that you're not gay. You're just sweet. Like there's always the girl who dates the obviously gay guy in high school. Well dressed, right? articulate. Right. Why would the hair's always correct? Why would smells but good? Other guy. There was this. There, there was this kid in uh, in high school. He was in like the drama club and everything. But he was clearly a homosexual. Like it was very obvious. He looked like a woman. Like he was clearly a homosexual. <laughs> But he wasn't out of the closet because it was still, you know, the late 90s and people weren't coming out of the closet quite as much even then. And all the girls had crushes on him because he was nice and had the same interests and would hang out with them. And we'd go around and we'd be like, he's gay. The guy that you have a crush on <laughs> <Yeah>. is gay. <laughs> and the girls would be like, you guys are such fucking dicks. You guys are assholes. You're just jealous. But you see and you just have to sit there and wait. Thank God for Facebook, because you just sit there and you wait <laughs> and you wait. And eventually, sometimes it's not until the mid 20s that status changes and you go, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this was obvious. 100%. And isn't that why we should be pushing for a more open world? Yes. If that kid had the luxury of being gay, right? Then he could have been your wingman. And yes. I've been wingman to every straight buddy I've ever had, where like if they were in love with a girl, mm -hmm. I like, I don't have friends who are like utter trash do you know what i mean and a girl would be like i don't know if i should i'd be like bitch you should yeah you should get get your pipes cleaned and fucking have fun with this hooker he's a good boy and they would tr and they would trust your judgment absolutely yeah. mayron is so much fun he wouldn't he wouldn't he would, lead he, me astray I, and, I, and i'm telling you i don't right lead them astray it's right. like why can't sex just fucking happen <laughs> why can't the sex just happen you know how many times i've had that argument <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sounds good but, in here but it doesn't work but no, imagine, you're, you're imagine a girl by the arm and shit. Why can't that sex just, just happen? happen? Because you never want to be your own broker. Imagine if I could be your broker in that. Actually, why can't the sex just happen? Jim is usually holding his own flaccid penis, going, "Why can't the sex <laughs> just happen?" Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just, I'm fucking threatening it with a fucking cow prod, <laughs> 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 fucking snorting Cialis off a mirror. Yeah, that, that happens to gays too. It happens to everyone. <laughs> Sucks. Oh, that's amazing. It does. That's amazing. So when you start comedy, you take to it like a fish to water. Did you know? Super fast. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you knew this is like, this is what I should have been doing all along. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, I studied theater. Mm -hmm. I was always the class clown. I was always an idiot. Uh, for my friends, I've always been the like kind of com comedic entertainer. And then, uh, and then, but I thought that stand up was something that like, because Janine was, uh, I was a huge fan of Janine when I was a kid. She taught me so much about like. You talking about the porn star Janine Garofalo? Garofalo. I see. Not, not the porn star, although she is also an idol. Yeah. Uh, the, but uh, I, I just thought that you opened your mouth and you sounded like that. Right. That it was just like a natural language that you either had like the ability to comedy or you didn't have the ability to comedy. I didn't understand it as a process of writing at all. Well, right. it's bold. you do actually. I think it is something you have the ability to do. Some people have, have worked really hard. They just have no ability. Like yeah. I've known people. No, that yeah. They, they want to be funny so bad. It's the saddest thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody who desperately wants to be funny and just isn't. Yeah, I've known a lot of people like that in my life, and it's yeah. a weird thing to watch. Like they want to be, they want to understand what that just that natural, comfortable, funny thing is, and they will never know it for as long as they live. And it's frustrating to watch for mm. them. I feel frustrated for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that's a no brain. I mean, we we were kind of talking about this when we were doing the documentaries, like how when you start as a comedian, you're with like this pool of people that's like you know probably you know, 600 people in your hometown or in like whatever city you're starting or maybe 200, 300 people. And then, you know, 
little by little, you stop working with those people as you move up the ladder and sure. they don't. Uh, it's just a weird thing. But like, I, I look back on those days super nostalgically. Like, I miss getting to work with people who are just trying to be funny. I, I miss... Yeah. I remember when my one friend, when I was doing, I was really early in stand-up, and he would come for like the first couple of years and he would do open mics. And he, he just, it would just be jokes, you know, it was, they were always not good. Mm. And it was really, jokes. no, they were bad. And there's no timing, no ability. And he didn't just strike you as a naturally funny person. No. Oh. No. It was never good. Oh. No. He but he wanted it. Is that badly. what improv is for? <laughs> 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 you know, it's like you just want community. Go get community. Right, like, go it's be there. in a supportive environment. It's there. Sure. I stink at improv, by the way. Like, on stage in a comedic yeah, sense, I could have told you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I could have told you. Ooh. Huh? Yeah, that no, was it. perfect improv. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there anything worse than somebody who can't improv? <laughs> yeah. I can improv comedically, but not like like when when improv. People uh, do it. I, I, There's a real skill to it, and I've mm -hmm. said this many times. Like I can't. I have no ability to run up in a scene, and I just I make it dirty fast. And I don't obey the rules. And I'm just I panic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah have, have you seen that bus? No, it's a toaster. Exactly. Yeah, no, it doesn't help. Yeah, any I of saw this. the bus. AIDS, dick, fuck. Uh, <laughs> my predictable three fucking <laughs> jokes. AIDS, dick, fuck. Right. But I have no ability just to go with the scene, and like I, I admire it if it, if you can do it right. But I mean, like, and the the ones who end up doing it, have, like they practice in comedy. You know, stand up, you practice, you yeah. get better at it. They take these classes with groups. That's the thing is that they don't have the luxury of getting better on their own. They have to. That's right. You know, which means that you have to run around with improv people. And Jesus Christ. I mean, you know what I mean? Even I say no sometimes. <laughs> like, there's some shit even I won't put in my mouth. Good to know. Do you know what I mean? And it's a yes and. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes and your balls. Get out.